we're going to talk about a movie again. One of my favorite things to do, applying it to spirituality. But this one is a recent theme. There's another multiverse movie out. Probably everyone in the world has heard of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So I went to go see it the other day, and I have about 100 comments. The problem with it is I was in the movie theater and I was texting myself and I didn't want to be that guy texting myself in the movie theater so I turned the dark, you know, the light off and I'm texting myself, swiping and sending myself messages in the middle of a movie theater. Okay, I was thinking I was doing a pretty good job, you know, you know, without looking. But man, it did not work out so well. Um, these are the things, some of the things I texted myself during the movie. Todd think that David the Universe gets toy, there it does not. Okay, I don't have much to say about that. Um, have tire gears set strange face your fears. Now, I picked up a little bit of that there, face your fears. I get that. I don't know what the rest of it was. <laughs> and then this is a good one. Every time you opened Lozita's portal, you to keep us to this moment where you're going to pitch that witch ass. you're reading my mind. So I'm not sure what any of that meant. I'm sure it was very meaningful at the time. Fortunately, I texted a few that came through clearly, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through those in a minute. But I just want to clarify again so that no one watches that movie and misunderstands the science of the multiverse, okay? It's very clear that, the, that we're living in a multiverse, but most Hollywood movies have characters traveling back and forth and meeting themselves in other universes, okay? That cannot happen. We can't meet another conscious version of yourself. There's one conscious version of yourself and an infinite number of potential selves. That's what the multiverse is for. I'm going to use last week's drawing a little bit. Um, and we talked about different people last week being all these different colors. But now I want to use the same drawing. And it's using yourself as different potential yous. But you're only conscious in one of them. This is exactly, again, how video games work. Every video game has an infinite number of variations. The producer or the, the, the developer of the game, let's stick with Pac-Man, using last week again, in the beginning, someone created Pac-Man. That's from Genesis or the Tao. The creator of Pac-Man is the origin of all things in Pac-Man. Logical, right? Then there's the Big Bang. That's when you turn on Pac-Man. Okay, before you turn it on, there's a, there's a disc there or, a, you know, a... Uh, some sort of something with data on it that once light hits it the game shows up But all the variations of Pac-Man are already there on the disc You one being are about to go explore all these variations of Pac-Man, okay? This is the universe we're living in. Here's some data just in the last week. These are articles that I came across uh, Is space pixelated? This is from Science Tech Daily. Is space pixelated? The quest for quantum gravity well, that's interesting. You know what's pixelated? Pac-Man, okay? And what we're wondering is, is this, does this world have a pixelated quality as well? Yes, we're in a video game. And there's one you, again, the conscious you, is the spiritual you, is playing a variation of a whole bunch of different characters of you, and that character, the lower self character, has an ego mind, and that's not you. But we're trying to integrate the two. There's the infinite perfect you, the eternal you, and then there's all these other variations of you. You're, they're never going to run into each other and have a conversation like Dr. Strange does in the movie, looking for other versions of himself. And when he runs into them, they're conscious too, or at least so it seems. That's not how it works, okay? How it works is you can alter you and experience another version of you that was always waiting there as a potential. Here's another science article. <clears throat> is everything predetermined why physicists are reviving a taboo idea? Now, this is from New Scientist. Is everything predetermined? Well, was everything predetermined by the Pac-Man producer or the, the, the creator? Yes, he put every variation into the game, right? Everything is totally predetermined. But then he lets you play the game. And how you play it, it comes with a lot of different rules. Unfortunately, I erased the ghost from last week, you know, but if you run into the ghost, there's a rule associated with that. Pac-Man's gonna die. Um, and if you go eat a chair, you're gonna feel good. Those are rules of the game, that's predetermined. But then you, free will, get to go exploring that game. Now the creator, whether it's the Tao or God or whatever, whatever you want to say, created all the rules of the game and here we are playing it. The conscious you, the, the, the spiritual you, is currently playing that game. And there's rules. Resent people, that's like going and hitting a ghost. It doesn't feel good, right? Love people, practice patience and forgiveness, it's like eating the cherries, okay? Very simple. Who's playing that game? Everybody. And we're playing it together. 
And you can play the resentment game if you want. You can play the judgment game. You can play the I'll only feel better if I get my way game. A lot of people are doing that, right? I need my guy to win the presidency or my gal. I need my team to win the Super Bowl. I need that job or I need that amount of money. That's a game you can play, remember? Birds, um, money, and what was that called that? Sandwiches? Okay, some guy said, is, he said, is that a Big Mac? I'm like, that's it, it's a Big Mac, okay? You can play that game all you want. But the rules of the game are very specific. In the multiverse of all these potential yous, because each one of these represents a different type of you, you could be a person that's way off the mark, you could be super close to it. When you're resonating with the truth, now you're playing the multiversal game. And if you play it well, you feel more light. If you don't play it well, you don't feel much light. And if you're hanging out with a bunch of other people who are like that, you might feel like you're part of the crowd or something, but you're not close to the truth. Okay, so is everything predetermined? Yes, it is. The guarantee that we're gonna end with it, what is the objective? It's a guaranteed outcome, it's gonna happen. It's been predetermined that way. And one more, again, science concepts. What is this one from, physics.org? Time travel could be possible, but only with parallel timelines. Now this is where the multiverse stuff comes into play. Scientists have long since determined parallel timelines time make sense in the multiverse. There's a whole bunch of variations that we could be experiencing. But we experienced the one we're on. There's another you that didn't come to this group. And there's another you out there that's not watching this video, okay? But it's not conscious. It's just a potential you. You're not going to run into them ever. That can't be done. Parallel timelines means you have to jump tracks. You're, you can't go back and kill your grandfather, as they say, unless you go into another timeline. In that timeline, things would be completely different. You're not going to run into you. It won't happen that way, okay? And that's like Hollywood does it. I love that they're talking about the multiverse. Gives us a chance to clarify and make it practical, okay? So here we go with the things that I wrote that actually made sense, and it backs all this multiversal game up. It's the spiritual self playing a game of the lower ego self, in which you know the ego is going to lose because you die at the end of this game, okay? Nobody's still playing Pac-Man for 30 years. Oh, my sister gave a good effort once. She played it for eight hours, and she kept playing, and my mom went downstairs and said, time for dinner. My sister said, no, I don't want to go to dinner. And my mom said, time for dinner, unplug. <laughs> and her game ended just like that, right? Well, this physical world game will end for all of us. We know that. Will the spiritual world game continue? Well, if you get to this black dot... If you get to the center and if you get balanced, that's when you know who you are because you've remembered that you're a spiritual being having a physical experience. So here are the things that I texted to myself that make sense. There's a reason why so many multiverse movies are finally becoming mainstream. It's happening a lot. Why? Because it's fact. We're in a game in which there's multiple versions of you in which you get to go experiencing them. Change your mind, and you experience a different version of you. Stay stuck in a pattern, well, you're gonna experience that version of you. Wanna experience a new you, go to another galaxy or universe or whatever, you're gonna to have to shift your mind. You wanna get out of this place? You better find center at some point. If you don't find center, according to most people, most philosophers in the world, reincarnation is a thing, you get to come back and loop all around again, okay? So, it's a mainstream thing because it's fact. Then it says, just because someone stumbles and loses their way doesn't mean they're lost forever. See, when we're not doing well, we're up there, or you know, one of these people that are far away, we're, we might be screwed up and lost a little bit, but that's part of the game. Seek and you'll find. We get lost, but you're not lost forever. The pain that we experience when we're far away from a truth is a motivator to get back to truth. Every time you step off the path and then you see a, a rattlesnake in the woods or something, get back on the path. It's easier over there. Whenever you're walking this, the truthful spiritual path, you feel more peace. Everybody experiences it like that. And the negative experiences we feel when we're far away from the truth, when that happens, um, the, the pain forces you to change. And then you experience a different version of yourself. Stay stuck in a pattern. You know, if you change, nothing, nothing changes. Stay stuck in that pattern. And then you'll just experience that universe. All those other ones are out there ready for you to go exploring. Uh, and then this comment. Um, where is it? Your mind is being held hostage by your alternate self. Okay, that one's phenomenal. Your mind is being held hostage by your alternate self. I'm not so who, who, sure who said that in the movie, but it's spot on correct, okay? Reminds me of the Matrix. When Morpheus says, your mind is in prison. We're in a prison of our own minds. We, behind bars that we cannot see. 
Well, the alternate self is the lower self, is the physical self, is the ego self. It's being held hostage by that, and we're exploring all these various timelines. The true self, the spiritual self, is the being that turned on the game in the first place to go exploring. Could very well be the very God we're talking about. The Big Bang is when you started this game. That's your experience. Well, that mind is being held hostage. By what? Our love of the physical world and money and Big Macs and sandwiches and birds and all that stuff, okay? And resenting each other and hating on others and blaming others and all of that. Remember, everybody's playing this game, but we're playing it individually, all right? It's dual controls. We're all playing this game together. What's my job? Get back to there. If I get back to there, that helps you. If you get back to there, that helps me. Rising tide lifts all boats, okay? So our minds are hostage. What are we supposed to do? Free our minds right? Free your mind from hostage, uh, hostage situation. This is what spirituality is for, to help you look at your life in the physical world differently, to see that it is a multiverse. It's not this universe that we're used to seeing, to see that there's variations of which you can then go explore. And then this one, which was pretty simple, know that they will be loved. Isn't that sweet? Okay. Perfectly true. Why? Because that little black dot I drew last week, which from everything emanates from that. It's a point of unity Krishna teaches. And once you understand that, you see that everything comes from that oneness, you experience the infinite spirit, says Krishna. Okay? That sounds like love to me. And recognizing that that's our home, that's how we could practice loving our enemies. Right? Loving the people that are way out there. Because, boy, that's a long journey that person has to make to get home. You're almost there. Jesus was right on the doorstep. That's why he was able to do what he was doing. Okay? So know that you'll be loved. Why? Because the objective of the game is this. Your spirit comes into this world. It's a multiverse. It's a whole lot of variations of this game that we're in, the ego game or the lower self game. And the objective of this adventure is to be love. You started out as love, you will end up as love, and along the way you have crazy physical adventures. You were initially this in the beginning. That's why Jesus says to approach heaven as a child, right? When you were a baby, you came in as this loving being. And by the end of it, the goal is to realize that you're a loving being. Everything else is just, uh, you know, uh, features of the game that's for fun to go exploring, right? And it is an adventure, isn't it? Lots of highs and lows. But when you realize that that centerpiece, love, everything emanates from that, whether it's from from the Bible or from the Tao or from any philosophy, just pure logic or video game thinking. The objective is to get back to home, finish off um, the journey by realizing that you are love. 